Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the 10th house and what it actually means. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely keep listening. I'm going to be talking about how it benefits you and how you can use it yourself. So the 10th house or your midheaven in astrology is the house of your career and your public image and how other people see you. It is also what the world asks of you and what you give back to the world. In a way, it can be your reputation, but I feel like with reputation, that's more of an 11th house thing. The 10th house is strictly your career, how you attract others, how you appeal to others, how others see you physically, without getting to know you, of course. But the 10th house is just very image-focused. It's like basically like your public image, who you are to the world, what you give back to the world. Um, your career, you know, that's why it's the house of careers, because, you know, it's sort of what you give back, it's what you're really good at, that's a better way of putting it, your 10th house is what you're naturally good at, and the sort of archetypes that, you know, fit you the best way, <laughs> so the 10th house is traditionally ruled by Capricorn, and Capricorn is a sign ruled by the planet Saturn, Saturn rules over hard work, and things like that, and, you know, um, material success, money, ambition, things like that are associated with Capricorn, associated with Saturn, and because of this, those are natural um, things that the 10th house sort of represents, so if you have a lot of planets in your 10th house, you might be very career focused, you might be very disciplined or good with business good when it comes to money good when it comes to dealing with other people or reaching large groups you know of other people the 10th house is also uh well it doesn't rule over large groups but if you do have a lot of planets here you're able to reach a larger audience if that makes any sense so how can this help you so when you understand your 10th house it's sort of like unlocking the magic within because then you finally understand what the world is asking of you then you finally understand you know what you're really good at for example if you have a libra 10th house or libra midheaven then you might find that you're really good with makeup you're really good with beauty, you're really good with fashion, you're really good with art. Uh, you might work around a lot of women or feminine people and things like that. Because Libra is ruled by Venus, and Venus is the planet of love, beauty, relationships, and even money and wealth. So you might even end up having a career in finance or something. But you know, those, all of those things are Venus ruled. Another example, if you have, I don't know, like Pluto on the midheaven, Scorpio midheaven, Scorpio 10th house, you might have a career in being like a detective or something dealing with law, criminal law, things like that. Your career might be kind of secretive. You don't really tell anyone how you make your money. Um, you could be a spiritualist. You could be anything that is sort of like a low profile, that's sort of unordinary, something that's very secretive, hidden. You know, those types of jobs, those types of professions, those types of careers, that could be a possibility for you um, if you have Scorpio on the midheaven. But basically, when you understand your midheaven, you're, uh, uh, oh, I cannot talk. I swear. <laughs> but basically, when you understand your midheaven, you're able to understand the things that you're good at. And you can use this to further your career. You can use this to establish yourself as a brand, create a business for yourself, you know, build a life for yourself that works by using your talents and the things that you're naturally good at. That's why it's good to really understand your midheaven and tap into it, understand the zodiac sign that rules over it. So you can find the skills um, that you need to further succeed, you know, in your life and, you know, generate income for yourself, be happy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Understand that your 10th house is what the world is asking of you. And once you actually start to give in to this request, you know, people are going to want more of that. And you're going to find something that really works with you. Another example, if you have something like Mercury, 
ruling over your midheaven. So if you have a Gemini or Virgo midheaven, you might find that you do really well in careers like writing, journalism, copywriting, um, even news broadcasting, talking to a lot of people, even becoming a YouTuber, um, anything dealing with people, anything dealing with talking to people, just being around people. Being around people, you know, being an entertainer, being a teacher of some sort, anything having to do with your hands, books, literature, this could look like, I don't know, architecture even. You know, just basically hands-on things, knowledge, school, reading, communication. Anything under that window is going to be great for a Virgo or a Gemini midheaven because it's rules by Mercury. Your 10th house can also be what others assume about you, like other people's assumptions of you, uh, regardless if it's true or not. It could be the types of things that people say about you. And, you know, it's very surface level. It's not a very deep house. It's a very, um, this is like the celebrity house. Like, imagine if you were a celebrity personality. That's basically the midheaven. It's what people think they see, you know? And when you start to really play into your midheaven, then others are going to only see this part of you. And it's not going to be necessarily true, but it works because it's your midheaven. For example, Angelina Jolie has an Aries midheaven, and themes of the Aries midheaven are aggression, action, fighting, athletics, and things like that. And so, in a lot of her films, she's often portrayed as someone who is very aggressive, someone who is very masculine, someone who's constantly fighting, you know, these aggressive roles. And that is very Aries midheaven themed. Um, Colors of Aries Midheaven are, I believe, black and red, and she can be seen in these colors as well. And you can just tell when she wears these colors, there's just something more vibrant about her, and it's because of her Midheaven. Another example is Kylie Jenner. She has a Libra Midheaven, and colors of the Libra Midheaven are light pink, white, I think light green, but it's mainly pink, white, and light blue. And literally all of her businesses have the exact same color scheme, and Venus, rule, uh, Venus rules over Libra, and the, Lib the Libra sort of aesthetic is very soft, very head and like, very dreamy, very artistic and angelic. And in her past campaigns for some of her businesses, you can see that she sort of plays into this. So that's another example as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I do offer consultations. You can just shoot me a DM on Instagram or shoot me an email and I'll get back to you shortly. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and you can also check out the links in my descriptions. I have multiple ebooks. So if you want, you know, um, if you're curious about astrology in general, just check out my ebook page and I have a plethora of content for you to decide upon. So yeah, there's that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and a comment down below. And I will see you next time. Love you. Bye. <laughs>